Hey everybody, Kelly Richardson here. Today I'm at ABQ Sewing Studios in Strathroy and I want to talk to you about tension. Not this kind of tension. The tension on your sewing machine. Now granted, if we're having a bad sewing day, the tension on your sewing machine can cause this kind of tension. But with just a little bit of understanding as to how the tension on your machine works, you can make all that go away. Okay, I want to start by giving you just a brief um, explanation as to what tension actually is. Tension is the um, balance of your stitches between your top thread and your bobbin. And if all is going well, those tensions should meet right smack dab in the middle of your piece of fabric. You shouldn't see your bobbin thread on the top, nor should you see your top thread underneath. So think of it as um, when, I'm, when I'm teaching my students or when I'm talking in class about tension, I usually um, relay it to like a tug of war. Okay, you've got your top thread and you've got your bobbin thread. All right, and they are forming a stitch and you don't want either one of those to win the tug of war. You don't want this team to be stronger, nor do you want this team to be stronger. You want them to be perfectly balanced so that nobody is winning the tug of war. Now, some of you might say, but I have automatic tensioning on my machine. How come sometimes my tension doesn't work? And generally, um, most machine manufacturers, if not all machine manufacturers, set their tensions and balance their stitches assuming you are using the same weight thread in the top as you are in the bottom. And that is generally a 50 weight uh, sewing thread which is kind of your standard normal everyday sewing thread. Uh, so the moment that you deviate from that norm is when you will have issues with your tension. And let me tell you, if you're doing free motion, which of course is my personal addiction, uh, it really messes with your tension. So don't be afraid of your tensions. I'm going to show you a few tips on how to set your tension and some more uh, detail as to what the tension is. Now before we start talking about setting our tension and the differences in the tension settings, one of the important things is that you have a properly wound bobbin. If your bobbin isn't wound properly, it doesn't matter how much you play with your tension, it's never going to be right. So what I'm talking about, I call this a mushy bobbin. See, I, might, I, I don't know if you can see that very well. I'm hoping you can. My fingernail, just, it, it's not, it's a very soft bobbin. The, the threads will, will move over one another and I can take this little screwdriver and poke it through there without any problem at all. So that is an incorrectly wound bobbin. And you see we've got like little sticky outy bits here. Um, if you have a bobbin that is wound like this, you need to fix that first. Um, now you can wind on, on most machines, you can wind bobbin to, to bobbin to fix this and wind this onto another bobbin, but this type of bobbin right here is never going to give you good tension, so fix that first. Now this here is a properly wound bobbin, not a mushy bobbin, and when I apply pressure with the screwdriver, it's nice and tight, and the thread doesn't bow in, and my screwdriver doesn't sink down into the bobbin threads. So this is this is kind of what this is what you're looking for in a properly wound bobbin, as opposed to a mushy. So when you are having um, tension issues, especially in something like free motion, the first thing you want to check is your bobbin tension. Because if your bobbin tension isn't correct, it doesn't matter what you do with the top tension; it's not going to work perfectly. So there are um, two different types of bobbin cases. This is a bobbin case from a front load machine. This is a bobbin case from a top load machine. We'll talk about this one first. Now with a top load, or sorry, with a front load machine, the bobbin case should stand in my hand and stand up when I pull on the thread and it should spool off nice and smooth. Okay, if the tension were too tight, the bobbin case would, would rise up out of my hand. If the tension were too loose, it would just sit there and the thread would spool off and the bobbin case would just lay flat in my hand. We don't want either of those two. So this is the screw right here. This, this little bar controls your tension on your bobbin case. And this is the little screw where you loosen or tighten your tension. So first thing you need is a small little screwdriver because these are tiny little screws. And if you remember, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. 
So right now the tension on this bobbin case is okay. But what I want to do is I want to tighten it up. So I'm turning it to the right. I just want to show you here. Okay, so see, way too tight. This bobbin case isn't even sitting in my hand anymore. And of course I exaggerated that. Normally if you are adjusting your tension, you're just going to turn it by a couple of minutes at a time. So now I'm going to loosen it way down. And see how it just sits in my hand and just spools off? Well, that's no good either. So you want to be somewhere in the middle where it was in the beginning. So as I am now, I need to tighten this up. So as I'm tightening it, if I was doing this on my machine, I would go five minutes. Check my tension. Getting there, but a little bit more. Let's do another five minutes. Right about there. There we are, standing back up in my hand and spooling off nicely. It's not catching. It's not um, bouncing around all over the place and it's certainly not climbing up the thread. So this is correct tension on this bobbin case now. Now when you move to the, to the um, top load, most of these machines, you can't do the, the stand up tension thing with these bobbin cases, it just doesn't work. So what you need to do is just look at your bobbin case and you want to see that the, the thread, the bobbin, is just moving nice and smooth and it's unwinding. If it was too loose, you would feel no tension on the thread. If it was too tight, the bobbin would stutter much like this. So let me just show you on here. Again, it's this tiny little screw right here. Okay, so I'm going to tighten this one up just a little bit. There we go. And you can see... There's a lot of tension on that bobbin case, and I, I'm hoping that you can see the, 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 the bobbin starts to stutter a little bit, and it's not running off there smoothly at all. That is not what you want in a bobbin case. So now I'm going to loosen it down, and generally with this one again, you just want to go a couple of minutes at a time to try to set your tension. And now you can see this is much better. It's still got a little bit of tension on it, and the bobbin is moving nice and smooth. So this tension would be all right. Now, if you are concerned with messing around with your bobbin tension, because you do need to remember that the bobbin case is preset for all your decorative stitches, um, as well as uh, you know embroidery stitches and whatever else you do on the machine. Um, if it worries you that you're playing around with the bobbin case tension, just get yourself a second bobbin case. Generally with the machine, when I buy one, I have a bobbin case that I can just mess around with and do whatever I want with because I'm going to be doing some weird things and decorative things. So I keep that bobbin case separate and on that one, I mess with the tension. On my original bobbin case, I just use that for when I'm doing regular sewing or not weird things on my sewing machine. So let's see what it looks like when your tension is um, good and when your tension is bad. So right now I have the machine set up. I have white thread in the top. I have orange thread in my bobbin. And normally I don't have such a color variation difference between the top and the bottom. But in this case, I want you to see what's going on. And I have my machine stitch set to three which is a little bit above the default, but I want to show you the defined stitches. So I'm just going to stitch a little bit here. Okay, and as you can see, I've got nice form stitches on the top. I'm not seeing any of my bobbin thread come through to the top. And on the back, I have beautiful form stitches and I don't have any of the top thread showing through to the back. Now, let's see what it looks like when the tension on the top is way too loose. Certainly sounds like the machine doesn't like that. All right, so this is what happens when your tension is way too loose. You'll see I've got all kinds of the top thread showing up underneath. There's bird's nests. It's absolutely very nasty underneath there. The, the stitches are not tight at all. Generally, when it's like this, what you really need to do is just to re-thread your machine because chances are um, you've bypassed the tension discs on your machine. So one of the, the 
rules of thumb is when you are threading your machine, always, always, always thread your machine with the foot in the up position. If you try to thread your machine in the down position, the tension discs are closed and the thread will not sit in the tension discs and therefore you will have no tension on your top thread and, and this is the result. So when it's nasty underneath, it's something to do with your top tension. When it's nasty on the top, it's something to do with your bobbin tension. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to rethread the machine. The very first thing we do is rethread the machine when our tension is this nasty underneath. Okay, I have rethreaded the machine, making sure, of course, that the foot was in the up position while I was threading. And let's see what we got going on. There. And you can see that that fixed that tension. So now I'm back up to um, proper tension again, just by rethreading the machine. And why I always rethread my machine um, when my tension is bad, first of all, is because it doesn't matter how long I've been sewing, how good of a sewer I am, every once in a while we still thread the machine the wrong way. So you just want to make sure that you haven't done that, you can eliminate that, and then you can go on and try to find the cause of your bad tension. Okay, so now I have increased the tension all the way to the top on this machine. And let's see what happens now. It doesn't sound very good, so something, you know something is going on. I always, I always say listen to your machine, bond with it, and listen to it. It'll tell you when something is not right. And here you can see, you see all that, the bobbin thread poking through to the top. The stitches are just terrible. And they, they actually just look like that top thread is laying just on top of the fabric, of which it actually is. So the joy, when your tension is this bad, is it's really easy to pick out those nasty stitches. And there we have it. Sewing machine tension is nothing to be afraid of. Just remember, nasty underneath, it's something wrong with the top tension. Nasty on the top, it's something wrong with your bobbin tension. So backwards to what you would normally think. If you find you have to adjust your tension, don't let it worry you. Small little increments, make an adjustment, do a test. Make an adjustment, do a test and your tension will be absolutely perfect. I hope this video has managed to take some of the tension out of your sewing experience and has helped you find your happy place. So until next time, this is Kelly Richardson. Have a wonderful day and happy sewing.